I'm Cairo 7, Pinpoint Meteorologist Nick Allard. It is mostly sunny and 46 degrees in downtown Seattle. I'm Ursula Royteen. Subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk. Powered by the Pacific Northwest. The Big Lead is brought to you by 3010 Weight Loss for Life. The Dory Monson Show on Cairo Radio. This is The Big Lead. Coming to you from the Carter Subaru studio. Welcome. Welcome to The Big Show. I got a lot to say about our despicable sheriff, Mitzi Jo Hanknick, and uh, saying she still will not work with ICE after this r- outrageous attempt to defraud the visa process for people who are legitimately victims of violent crimes in our country. Uh, what, what a horrible statement about her. I'm going to get to that in a few minutes here. But there is a story. I always say I start my show 90% of the time with local news. But there is a story in the news today that so well illustrates trends in media, in news, in so-called journalism. And I think that it also reflects too much of what's going on around here. And let's get right to our big lead. The big lead. I sense a Dory rant coming on. Well, this is shocking. It is disgusting. It's nauseating. But video and audio emerged this morning, thanks to the folks at Project Veritas. Amy Robach is an anchor at ABC News, and by all accounts, she's a very solid reporter. But she was, people have mischaracterized this. They say she was caught on a hot mic. Now, she was talking to a bunch of people with a microphone on, And she had to know that somebody might be recording this in the control room because nobody is foolish enough to think when you're speaking into a microphone that there's no chance that it could be recorded. So Amy Robach is on the set of ABC News, and she is talking about Jeffrey Epstein, the pedophile who was murdered in jail. The official report is he killed himself. Uh, I think you're incredibly naive if you think that he killed himself. A man who had such powerful connections, including President Bill Clinton, as you're going to hear in these Amy Robach clips. And then I'm going to tie all of this in into what's going on around here in media and in journalism. But this is Amy Robach speaking, apparently not knowing it was being recorded, she said that she had had the Jeffrey Epstein story for three years, and ABC News spiked the story. I've had the story for three years. I've had this interview with Virginia Roberts. We would not put it on the air. Um, first of all, I was told, who's Jeffrey Epstein? No one knows who that is. This is a stupid story. Um, then the palace found out that we... By the way. If somebody at ABC said, who's Jeffrey Epstein, they should have been fired for ignorance because he was already a convicted pedophile who had done time in a luxury prison. But people knew who Jeffrey Epstein was. By spiking this story, and she said, we had the goods on this man. I want you to think about how many children were raped because ABC News executives spiked this story. She had her whole allegations about Prince Andrew and threatened us a million different ways. Um, we were so afraid we wouldn't be able to interview Kate and Will that we that also quashed the story. And then um, and then Alan Dershowitz was also implicated in because of the planes. So she told me everything. She had pictures. She had everything. She was in hiding for 12 years. We convinced her to come out. There's one of the girls that her source was somebody who had been raped as a 16, 17 year old girl. They were going to be able to implicate the royal family, Prince Andrew. They were going to try to talk to Kate and Will. Uh, they had the goods on Epstein as he remained a free man. We convinced her to talk to us. 
Um, it was unbelievable what we had. Clinton, we had everything. We had Clinton. Now, it's well known that Bill Clinton uh, took at least 27 flights on Jeffrey Epstein's airplane that was dubbed the Lolita Express. And now Amy Robach says we had Clinton. Well, now let's unravel this a little bit more. Uh, who is one of the most important stars, probably in terms of revenues, the most important star at ABC News? George Stephanopoulos, who used to work for the Clintons uh, as the host of Good Morning America and their Sunday news shows. George Stephanopoulos is responsible for as much in revenues as anybody at ABC News. So you want to know, why would a network quash a story? Well, if she was going to bring down Bill Clinton, if she was going to be able to, to connect Bill Clinton to these pedophile romps, uh, that wouldn't look very good for the ABC News guy who worked very closely and remains good friends with Bill and Hillary Clinton. But she says they had Clinton. I, I tried for three years to get it on to no avail, and now it's all coming out, and it's like these new re revelations, and I freaking had all of it. I, I, I'm so pissed right now. Like, every day I get more and more pissed because I'm just like, oh, my God. We, it was, um, what, what we had was unreal. Other women backing it up. Hey, yep. Brad Edwards, the attorney, three years ago, saying, like, aunt, like, we, there will come a day where we will realize Jeffrey Epstein was the most prolific pedophile this country has ever known. And I had it all three years ago. You got that? ABC News had the story on the most prolific pedophile maybe this country's ever known. But he was rich, and he was powerful, and he was connected to presidents, and he was connected to media stars. And these dogs at ABC News wouldn't let her do the story. And Amy Robach says, there's no way, with all the powerful connections, there's no way Jeffrey Epstein killed himself in prison. So do I think he was killed? A hundred percent. Yes, I do. Because you want he made his whole living blackmailing people. Yeah. There were a lot of men in those planes, a lot of men who visited that island, a lot of powerful men who came into that apartment. I mean, when I heard you described it, it's just that someone was like... I knew immediately. <clears throat> and they made it seem as though he made that suicide attempt two weeks earlier, but his lawyers claimed that he was roughed up by his cellmate around the neck that was all like to plant the seed and then that's why i really believe it like really believe it well, everybody believes that he was murdered because of his powerful connection and uh the woman whose last name is maxwell helped epstein recruit these underage girls for these sex flights and on his sex island Gillian Maxwell, who I had all sorts of stuff on her, too. I love it. I'm like, it's so funny to hear everyone say her name now, because I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I had all the, and everyone's like, who's that? Who cares? I kept getting that. Who cares? Um, she knows everything. She knows, she knows, she should, she should be careful. Well, she was his, like, she went out and recruited all of these girls. She should watch her back. Because if she goes, I mean, I'd have, like, security guards all around me. Okay. Amy Robach, plan, uh, Project Veritas, got that audio and released it a little bit earlier today. So why is this such a huge story? Because it does speak to the very character of the people who run these national news networks. At ABC, they spiked a story about a pedophile who may have provided underage girls for Bill Clinton, judging from what Amy Robach said there. Uh, we know that Clinton flew on his plane 27 times. 
Why would Bill Clinton fly with a known pedophile 27 times? He says, oh, it's because he was a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that gives you an idea of the character of the people at ABC News. That they would rather spike a story and allow 15, 16, 17-year-old girls to be raped by the disgusting men for more years than to hurt the powerful. And we're talking about every network. At NBC, Ronan Farrow had the story about Harvey Weinstein. And NBC spiked that story. Meanwhile, NBC News and the executives who made these decisions are still running NBC News. They allowed Matt Lauer to install a rape button at his desk so he could lock the door remotely when a woman who was the target of his affections walked into his office, allegedly. Those NBC executives are still running the network. CBS, Les Moonves, the most powerful man in entertainment, ran CBS. And also forced out because of his sexual advances on so many women. Charlie Rose, the morning show star, CBS's news coverage. Charlie Rose, out because of his sexual advances on women. You know, one thing I'll say, you know, it, at least at Fox News, they got rid of the people. You know, O'Reilly, yeah, O'Reilly stayed around too long, they made a payoff, but O'Reilly's gone and gone forever. Uh, Roger Ailes, who built Fox News, gone for this reason. Eric Bowling, whose offense was far less great and who was a significant anchor presence on the five, gone. Uh, they cleaned them out there. But I just want to talk about the, the morality of the people at ABC, NBC, CBS. Because understand, while they were covering up Matt Lauer's alleged rape button, while they were allowing Charlie Rose and Les Moonves to serial molest women, while they were spiking stories about Harvey Weinstein at NBC, spiking stories about pedophile Jeffrey Epstein at ABC, they also, right about the same time all of this was happening, about 14 months or so ago, those same news divisions concocted every phony story they could about Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. They ran every phony story for purely political purposes about Brett Kavanaugh when they had not one iota of evidence against him compared to what they had on their own stars and on powerful people like Epstein and Weinstein. These aren't news operations. You, you cannot give any credibility to ABC, NBC, CBS if they have moral dogs running those networks. And they do. It's quite clear. So how can anybody trust any of them as their news source, as their news provider? The information that we all get is only as good as the person who's providing it. Now, my radio show, it's my opinion about the news. But I've tried for a quarter century on the air to not do anything that would make me lose your trust. And I think that's one reason why our show has succeeded to the extent that it has. And I'll say, I think, I think our local TV stations are pretty good in that regard. Really good. Our, our newspaper has gone off the deep end. You're running banner ads in the middle of 
election stories over the weekend, banner ads, you know, against the want or for certain candidates, against 976. By the way, vote yes on 976 if you haven't voted yet. But uh, you, you cannot trust most news disseminators if they are going to be covering up for some of the most despicable people in our society. Now, Amy Robach has released a statement that's just come out. As a journalist, as the Epstein story continued to unfold last summer, I was caught in a private moment of frustration. I was upset that an important interview I had conducted with Virginia Roberts didn't air because we could not obtain sufficient corroborating evidence to meet ABC's editorial standards about her allegations. My comments about Prince Andrew and her allegation that she had seen Bill Clinton on Epstein's private island were in reference to what Virginia Roberts said in that interview in 2015. I was referencing her allegations, not what ABC News had verified through our reporting. The interview itself, while I was disappointed it didn't air, did not meet our standards. In the years since, no one ever told me or the team to stop reporting on Jeffrey Epstein. Okay, look, if you don't have corroborating evidence that a president of the United States was a pedophile on an island with underage girls, you don't spike the story. You send every resource you have to do the corroboration. But they didn't do that. Why? Because that would hurt George Stephanopoulos. He's our guy. He generates our revenues. ABC News has just issued a statement. At the time, not all of our reporting met our standards to air, but we have never stopped investigating the story. That's not the way Amy Robach made it sound. She said they spiked it. So they're all just covering up with these phony statements now today. But then you look at how they've defended pedophiles, how they've defended ex-presidents and royal families, and if they are capable of that kind of a gross cover-up, then they're equally capable of something as putrid as, well, they tried to destroy Brett Kavanaugh's life. They're, they want to destroy the President of the United States. And, you know, the stock market yesterday hit an all-time high. And it's climbing even higher 37 minutes before the close. Do you think that got mentioned on the front page of the New York Times or the Washington Post? Uh, of course not. It's not on the Seattle Times either. Why not? Well, they, they got a job to do. They got to destroy somebody. They get to pick and choose who they're going to destroy and who they are going to give complete protection to. And the pedophiles, the powerful, the wealthy, they're, they're going to protect them. Make sure that those stories don't air. Harvey Weinstein. Jeffrey Epstein, Charlie Rose, Matt Lauer. We'll defend them all. But they will pick targets, man. And if they will be this disgusting in defending pedophiles, how disgusting do you think they will stoop to try to destroy somebody else that they have picked out, identified as needing to be brought down? Be very careful who you get your news from because this is this ABC thing is really disgusting. Okay, tell you what, I've got a whole stack of local news in front of me. I'm going to take a quick time out, and we are going to continue with the big lead after Ursula checks the news here on the Dory Monson Show. <laughs> 